I've been a psychiatrist for 32 years over uh, overall, and uh, for 22 of those years I worked at Regents Hospital in an acute care unit. I'm probably the most comfortable I am sitting in my office talking to people. And, uh, you know, I still have people come up to me every day and tell me, or ask me, uh, you know, isn't that a difficult job to do? Uh, you know, listening to all these people's problems uh, all day long. And I would say, you know, uh, it's not for me. You know, I enjoy doing it and uh, I think I can, uh, can help them out basically. So I think that's what keeps me going. Over the years I've been working, I, I noticed a couple of trends. I think the biggest trend is uh, that uh, stays on acute care psychiatric units are getting shorter and shorter. There's an expectation that people should be discharged within three or four days. And that's generally not enough uh, to stabilize uh, a severe psychiatric problem, especially, especially if it involves drug or alcohol use. Uh, so we have a, a population of people who are kind of circulating in and out of hospitals, in and out of state hospitals, and they never ever seem to get quite stable. You know, in fact, uh, administratively at the government level and at uh, healthcare administration level, there seems to be very little interest in making sure that these folks do get stable. The other trend is that there's less and less housing for these uh, people over the years. You know, so a lot of them are in homeless situations, they're in shelters, and uh, there's a lot of violence and aggression that happens uh, just being part of the homeless population. So a lot of people find that when they come into a hospital these days, and let's uh, say for example they're experiencing hallucinations, and uh, they're interviewed in the hospital emergency department, and the person interviewing them doesn't think they're dangerous enough to be admitted, they're basically told to leave and uh, make an appointment in an outpatient clinic. And you can't get into most psychiatric outpatient clinics for at least a month or two. So they're given a strong message that, you know, even though we acknowledge you have a problem, we're not really going to do much about it. And so that leads to increasing their frustration. And of course, if they have untreated mental illness, uh, they may have a tendency to become more aggressive the next time they come through the emergency department. I have been threatened much more seriously than I've been uh, actually assaulted. Uh, threatened, uh, you know, in terms of uh, homicide. I, have a, I had a patient tell me once that they were going to uh, buy a rifle and shoot me one day when I was walking out of my office. I had a patient on the front porch of my home uh, with a gun, or former patient. Uh, and. Uh, I've had numerous threats to, uh, you know, burn my house down uh, or stab me. That was the most recent threat. If you can't get people out after they're committed, they're going to be staying at those community hospitals a long time. Those community hospitals aren't set up to deliver long-term care. So, you know, you'll find uh, over congestion on the units. You'll find a lot of frustration, a lot of boredom. Uh, so uh, a couple of things need to happen. You know, the state needs to realize that the state hospital system has probably gotten too small too quickly and maybe uh, upscale that. Uh, there has to be more uh, community treatment, uh, community beds available for people who are homeless and mentally ill. And uh, the hospitals need to take a much more enlightened view of treating mental illness. The only awareness the public gets in the Twin Cities is every now and then an incident that happens in a hospital becomes public. You know, I think there's been some, uh, there have been some uh, uh, famous incidents recently in the last five or ten years. Uh, but the majority of incidents that happen in hospitals, uh, people are unaware of. You know, they're unaware of uh, the, uh, let's say, the subpopulations in a hospital that create, uh, can create violence in a hospital setting. They're unaware of the total number of injuries. Uh, I think the, uh, the nursing uh, professional organization in the state on their website has uh, a list of a fairly incredible number of injuries that nurses experience every year. And I think, you know, the nurses are on the front lines. Certainly they, uh, they take the brunt uh, of the injuries because they have more patient contact than doctors do. Uh, and so I think that this, uh, this walk uh, will hopefully raise public awareness and also uh, lead to some uh, solidarity, I think, between healthcare workers.